Hello and welcome to Series 2, Episode 2 of The Engine Room in association with Defender. I'm your host Sean Kennedy and today I'm joined by fellow Glasgow Warriors Kyle Rowe and Xander Fagerson. Hiya. Right then boys, let's get into it. How good is it to be back at Scotston? Great to be back. <laughs> Loving being back with the boys and uh, yeah, it's been a while so getting back in the building and seeing some friendly faces and getting back to training hard. Looking forward to winning for Warriors again. Is it a big change? Obviously, for people outside of the kind of rugby circles, is there a massive change from Scotland camp to being in here? I think probably the biggest one would be just being back in your own bed, being back at home. And um, you know, Scotland camp is it's awesome fun, and it's great to be in the camp. But of course, like you're in a hotel for for the eight weeks. Um, so yeah, just being back home with the family and getting back to your your daily schedule and your, what you do on a day to day basis and cooking your own food's been quite quite good fun. You know, um, so yeah. I've been back to making my scrambled eggs for breakfast and yeah, can't complain. Nice. And uh, Kyle, you were back in the Scotland mix after your injury, obviously after your first cap. Um, yeah. How was that experience? It was the first time in the Six Nations as well? First time in Six Nations. Uh, yeah, I felt like it's been a long time coming, to be honest. Going from my first to my second, uh, being what, a year and a half, nearly two years since my first cap. So yeah, it was a bit of a, I didn't really go in with any expectations going into the Six Nations. So. Uh, yeah, to get three caps, three more caps overall was pretty, was pretty good. Yeah, the boys in here were definitely buzzing for you, mate. And um, yeah, thought a lot of the Glasgow boys here as well played really well through that Six Nations. Is there any moments that stand out for you from Glasgow boys? I've got one in my head that I'll, if you don't say it, I'll say it. Um, I think for me, it was probably that first game against Wales um, during the anthems. Like we had a lot of travel and support. And I thought Flower of Scotland was pretty, was pretty crazy in the down in Wales, but that Welsh anthem was like next level, especially with the roof closed. It was, it was mental. Um, yeah, no, nah, um, I think the, the one standout for me was probably Hugh Jones. Um, that solo effort against Ireland was pretty special, um, just because that was probably the most recent one. But I think all the Glasgow boys get a really good account of themselves and sort of did what they've been doing for Glasgow week in week out on the international stage. So great to see and hopefully we can, we can bring bring something back a bit different and keep the boys going when they come back to Glasgow now. And then obviously we had a few young boys get called into the camp, Max and Alex, and then Alan Miller getting his call up. Um, obviously it's pretty good for us as a club, but like really tough for those boys as well. How did they go when they went in? Oh, they're all forwards, so I'll probably take that one. Yeah, um, yeah now <laughs> boys did really well. Um, sort of just came in, got their heads down, worked really hard and uh, didn't look out of place at all. And I think... It's great for overall squad development as well. You know, those boys getting a getting a flavour of what international rugby is like is only going to make them better. So, um, I think they give a really good account of themselves, and if they keep working hard. I'm sure they could they could be in a in a squad soon. Um, so yeah, now it was great to have them in, and really enjoyed having some more friendly Glasgow faces. In camp. How many people did Big Al injure when he was in? Uh, Big Al, uh, the boniest day sees in the league. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, he was actually all right. Luckily, <laughs> I stayed away from him. So obviously we've had quite a few boys get their first caps who have been through the academy system here, Scottish lads coming through, so there's been five this season. Kyle, can you name them all? <laughs> ben Ashbar, Duncan Munn, Gregor Hiddleston, Alex Samuel and Max. Oh, there's one no, I'm one thinking more. that you've Second missed. row. I think um, Big Al got his first cap last season, didn't he? Yeah, big hours last season. You put that, you put me on the spot there. I've, this is my first first proper season at Glasgow. <laughs> put me on the spot. It's it's first content, interview. man. It's just good content. Um, yeah, Rudy Hart. Rudy Hart. I yeah. see. I was about to. <laughs> you meant Rudy Hart when you said Alex Samuel. I know uh, what you meant. Very similar. Um, very tall. Obviously, five players in a season is coming through the academy. It's quite quite a high number. They've all played class and have been in, involved, mm. so they don't look out of place at all. But it's obviously a good place for the club to be in in terms of having youth coming through and playing well and. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think it's great having uh, having a lot of young lads come through the the whole academy system, Super Six, Prem rugby stuff like that. It's great them great them developing, uh, seeing them developing week in week out for training, and then them getting their shot. It's been really it's been really good to see, and they've not looked out of place at all. And I think just uh, as Cal touched on, you know, they've all been training really well, and um, you can see it week in week out. You know, they're they're improving and they're working on things that coaches tell them to work on. So. To see them get the opportunity and take it with both hands, has, it's been great to see and it just bodes really well for the club, for the young boys coming through, pushing for places, creating competition in the squad, it's only going to make us better. So yeah, re in a really good spot. And obviously D-Money had a massive impact at the weekend. D-Money, yeah. Oh. D-Money. 
One tackle, 30 seconds. What a guy. Exactly. 100% tackle success, 100% nah, win 100% rate 100% in, win. in the URC. <laughs> so, looking ahead to Europe. Obviously, we've got Harlequins in the, in the last 16. What can we expect from them, do we think? I think a lot of um, a very attacking-based game, as we both, I say we both like to chuck the ball about more, so we like to play sort of from everywhere. We're, not, we're both, as Quinns and as Glasgow, from what I've played against them at London Irish, they're not afraid to play from anywhere, mm. similar to us. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a very very expansive game of rugby and be pretty end-to-end, I'd imagine. Yeah, I played at the Twickenham Stoop for a pre-season warm-up game uh, quite a while ago, so I know it's a, it's a great ground, it's going to give me a great atmosphere, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, European rugby, um, last 16, it's going to be, it'll be a physical encounter, but as Cal touched on, you know, they, they throw the ball around. I'm sure it'll be a physical game as well. They've got a big forward pack and um, they'll be well drawn the line-out, you know, having one of our ex-coaches there as well. And I think, you know, Andre Heste is in at 12, Marcus Smith at 10, it's going to be quite direct. Um, and as Cal touched on, they'll, they'll try little things and a few Maverick players as well. So it's going to be a great game and yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, if, it's it's a good matchup, I think. Like, like you've said, both teams play pretty similar. Like, yeah. They've got players who are very physical, also skillful, and they'll play the space well as well. So makes for a good game. Yeah. I've played there as well, just to throw that out. All <laughs> nice, nice. There, right? Did there. you win? I won. One, one win from one. Bro, yeah, who, who are you playing I'm for? I'm one from one as well. For uh, Edinburgh. Oh, boo! <laughs> That's not a win. I sent the bomb squad down. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Dunkey Weir. <laughs> Big boggy. Slot, we slot drop goals. We beat them. We good. beat them, is it? Yeah. A win's a win, mate. Exactly. It was wet weather. Wet weather specialist. Right, so I'll be jumper. So, lads, how, how do you think last season's run in the Challenge Cup might help us this year, where we are now in the, in the Champions Cup? No, I, I think, you know... Um, Getting to any knockout stages of a European competition is always a, it always means you have to be consistent throughout the, the pool stages, you know. And I think, um, is yeah, playing playing these big games, you only get, get experience in that. It's only gonna make you better. So um, we got got to the final last year, um, probably didn't give, give give the best account of ourselves. So our away away from home form as well, you know, this year's been pretty good. So um, yeah, I don't think we fear anyone, and I think you know going down there. It's all to play for. It's whoever wins on the day. It doesn't matter how you've done in the pools. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I think it'll be it'll be a great day. From my point of view, obviously coming here this season from an outsider's point of view, I think it's probably going to give everyone in the squad a lot of motivation to go and do one better. Basically, that was from sort of my point of view. From the outside, I'm really motivated to help the team get as far as as far as we can in the competition. Obviously, hopefully win it, but. Um, as Xander touched on, as long as we play our game and we know that we've given everything, doesn't matter what the result is on the day, that we're, we're gonna, yeah, we'll be in a we'll be in a good place basically. We've kind of got a point to prove as well, don't we? Like yeah. last year not being in the Champions Cup, that that was pretty frustrating for us as a club. Mm-hmm. Um, so now that we're in the knockout stages, like we want to keep going, like you say, and yeah. prove our worth in definitely. European rugby, definitely. Yeah. And then obviously, lastly. We're expecting a decent travel and support down there. D- does it make a difference when, when the fans make noise and when, when there's a lot of fans in away games? Because I've, I've obviously I've got my, my own thoughts on it. For you yeah, boys, I think it's I think it's massive. Um, the one that I go back to is uh, that Bayonne game this season that we won over there. Like yeah, they had a massive home support. Um, we had a decent traveling support, which I felt helped me. Help motivate me during game during the game when I was knackered. Basically, gave me that extra one percent, and uh, yeah, it was. I think going down to the stoop, we're going to need going to need all the support that we can get to give us that extra couple of percent to go and win down there. Yeah, I think the War Nation are quality. Where, wherever we play, you know, we've, we've always got a few friendly faces in the crowd, um, and they make themselves heard. Um, so yeah, no, nah, I think it's it's a absolutely massive for. Especially for us forwards, you know, putting our, putting our heads in places we don't, don't really want to sometimes. And uh, when you hear the crowd get lift, you know, when you get, when you get that mall going and you get a scrum pen, it's, uh, it gives you a big lift. And um, I'm sure uh, down at Twickenham Stoop, it'll be, it'll be no different. And can't wait to hear them make loads of noise. I've never felt the feeling of getting a scrum pen awarded to me in my life. Well, I usually no. tell us to keep pushing. Push, push. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this instalment of the Engine Room in Association with Defender. Thank you to my guests, Kyle Rowe and Xander Fagerson. Bye. Bye, and see you again next time.